Uh, Justin West, Local 2488, Mitsubishi Motors, Region 4, Dennis Williams, Director. I'm speaking in opposition to this resolution regarding income security issues. Two tiers is killing this union. This resolution hardly mentions tiered wage scales. Delphi executives continue to extract bonuses as rewards for their heinous attack on workers across the globe. Ford rewards its executives with bonuses for extracting wage and benefit concessions from their workers and retirees. Now Daimler Chrysler is in the midst of their continued profitable corporate record, and they're seeking to cover it all up so they can join the concessions bandwagon. We, the membership, as elected representatives from across the nation, Canada and Puerto Rico, from varying industries and job classifications, need to share with this leadership of the international and with each other just what is going on with ideas to combat the corporate economic terrorism being foisted upon all working people across the globe. How do we fight back? When will it end? Let there be no doubt that the UAW is in a fight for its survival. The media calls it a fight for relevance. Meantime, the UAW International's approach has been to espouse lately good things come from competitive corporations. Partnerships fostering cooperation with, uh, partnerships fostering cooperation with corporations is the way to go. Brother Gettelfinger gave a tremendous opening speech, but even within his oration, he stated we should not confuse cooperation with capitulation. Brother Gettelfinger, I'm from Peoria, Illinois, and I was at the convention in 1998 when our late president, Steve Jokic, called the concessionary field con uh, settlement at Caterpillar Tractor a victory. Caterpillar is hiring right now, second tier wages, no benefits, no seniority, full-time temporaries. Concessions, be they at GM, Ford, Chrysler, American Axle, Delphi, Vistiana, Mitsubishi, Numi, etc., will be no victory. Brother Gettelfinger, we gave uh, Delphi the GM plants. We gave Delphi two-tier wages. We gave Delphi the GM workers pensions. But these concessions have not sated that corporation's thirst for more blood in this race to the bottom. Delphi has declared a bankruptcy organized to destroy every last shed shred of dignity and security that generations of union members fought and sacrificed to achieve. My point is, Brother Gettelfinger, concessions do not save jobs. And to you and, and the other rest of the international, I urge you not to confuse concessions with victory. Brother Gettelfinger, you say much of these problems need to be addressed through government legislation. I agree a lot of that. But this is not a BCAP convention. This is a bargaining convention. And I ask you, what can we as workers do directly now to help fight this onslaught of corporate greed before the big three talks on our jobs, at our locals, amongst our brothers and sisters? Through this body, I urge you to vote this resolution down until we address strategies to mobilize and fight back at the grassroots level. And lastly, I want to thank you, Brother Gittlefinger, for mentioning the struggle at Con Selmer, the Vincent Bach plant. Those locked out members are on the front line suffering, but hanging in there to defend the American dream. Thank you. What's your impression so far of, of this bargaining convention? The, the tone of this bargaining convention? Well, I, I'm impressed actually that there's a lot of people who are prepared for a serious fight. I'm not convinced that the union is doing what it needs to do to organize that fight. Uh, for example, there was that person who got up and uh, even though he was very fearful of uh, challenging the leadership, you know, felt it absolutely necessary to report that two-tier yes. was a disaster in this plan. Uh, you have other people who are getting up trying to get the message across that the skilled trades are under attack and are asking for support. And you, so, I think people understand that something needs to be done. They're still hoping that the union will organize to fight for them. But I think the union has to do something different than it's done in the past and actually begin to mobilize its members, not just simply think it can walk into bargaining and put good language on the table and win anything. I mean, what people, I, I think the Chrysler, um, quote, sale should once and for all convince people that there are no partners with management. Um, 
that management will do what the sh shareholders want, and if that means throwing out or destroying the membership, that's what they'll do. And so the only way that we'll be able to uh, get anything in here is the extent to which we're organized to fight and make demands. And that's what the union still has to do. In, in, you know, I, I'm hearing more people say I rise in opposition because the language isn't strong enough, more than I've heard at past conventions. Do you think that the international's hearing that or that they can, they will respond to that in any kind of a constructive way? I don't have enough experience at previous conventions to know to the extent to which the international does respond to, this, to these things. I, I think we'll have to wait and see. I, I would hope that they would respond to it, but I have no confidence that they will. So I think we have to continue trying to do the right thing. I mean, the very first thing that should be happening, for example, in Chrysler, is that they'd be calling Chrysler Council meetings, bring Jeep back into the Chrysler Council, and be having meetings over and over to discuss how we will act together as a union in Chrysler, how we will not let and, you know, one local or one section of the company be discarded while they sell off, say, the most profitable sections. But that requires getting all the locals together and actually having that discussion. And basically threatening the anybody who's going to buy this company that it's not going to, this union will not allow them to carve up the uh, carve up Chrysler and discard the pieces that it wants to. Who has the power to call that type of meeting? Is that entirely dependent on the international? Or could the bargaining council, could a, could a couple of local presidents say, we're going to call this meeting? Could they pressure that? I assume a couple of presidents could do that. I, I don't think at this point, you can tell from in, in here, um, most of the members are too much afraid of not having international support to even raise their hands to ask that we not have this book, awful book read to us. I mean, it's not that the book is awful, but that this awful act of reading in this, in this book. I mean, people are very frightened of taking on the international. And so I think that if we're going to be effective against Chrysler, it will depend on the international actually calling it. Now, I would like to see local presidents call such a meeting, but most, I think, will try to work through the Chrysler department. It is true that this Chrysler department is much improved over Nate Gooden, and so it's possible that it may actually do that. Do you think that, um, you know, do you, that Chrysler will be the target? Are they going to set them up first? I, I, I mean, it was believed while Chrysler was profitable and before all this sales stuff happened, that Chrysler would be the target. But now that GM appears to be profitable, there's talk that GM might be the target, and Chrysler would be too. Yeah. So I, I have no idea I, uh, on that. And I've never been right when I have made the prediction. What can we do to, um, as union members, delegates, rank and file, do to pressure the international to meet our needs, and our needs being stronger contracts? I would think that the first thing would be to start with resolutions in locals and then try to organize locals to actually start taking some action in their locals against, you know, acting like a union in the plant where we start having group grievances where everybody puts in, in preparation for this contract, safety and health grievances, uh, work standards grievances, strikeable grievances, uh, so that we can actually threaten, have something to threaten the company with. So to give the company the impression that there's a militancy on the shop floor? There's militancy. I mean, it, just the simple things like people starting to save money so that they can go out on strike. The, the company will not respect anything except a membership that's willing to withhold its labor in one form or another. And as long as they think people are running scared, they're just going to keep laying on more and more of uh, the concessionary demands.